All right, people. All right, people. Today I'm talking about harboring secrets. Harboring secrets. Now, why was the harlot Rohab, Rahab, whatever her name was, why was she just abide by faith? Thou shalt not bear false witness against your brothers. Bear false witness. Ooh. Did she bear false witness against the spies? Did she lie on them to destroy them? Or did she conceal a matter? He said it's better to conceal a matter than to reveal it. You know what I'm saying? And she was spared because she, the people came to her, have you seen these guys? Oh, they left already. Most people consider that lying or bearing false witness. Look at the big picture. It was none of her business. The dudes brought her no wrong. And her helping them helped her in the end. You see, sometimes you'll run your mouth about the wrong people. Say the wrong things about what's going on in regards to certain people. And it's not going to hurt help you. It's going to hurt you. One thing I hate in a workplace is a brown noser. Everything they see, they feel they got to tell. Now this goes back to for rewards, doing things for reward. The judge takes a bribe, this and that. They think they're going to benefit by saying little non-essential things about other employees. And the thing is, I realize people, once a snitch, always a snitch. That's probably why Judas, it was best that he'd never been born. Cause Judas was somebody who liked to run his mouth. Yeah, I know exactly what a Christ is. For some silver. For reward. Most people are doing things not out of a good conscience. Now God knows the heart. You can do things out of a good conscience. One thing about it, when you're walking in the spirit, you're gonna do things out of a good conscience far as the spirit goes but a lot most people are not operating in the spirit they're operating in the flesh so they're like if i say this it's going to make me look better so i can, might get a raise even when you fill out job applications if you see somebody doing this what are you supposed to do mind your own business most of the time you'll know what to say and one thing i didn't realize in this world i didn't seen people do all types of things and I'm like, man, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. And I'd have seen people do the same thing and then come tell on another person for doing the exact same thing they do. I'd be like, what in the world? And I'll get mad. I'd be like, man, y'all think you're getting, uh, getting ahead of each, each other by biting and devouring one another's gonna help you? Damn, that's, that sound like scripture. That sound like some scripture say. When you devour one another with words, thinking it's gonna assist you, gonna help you. It's not gonna help you. You might move up a little bit, but you guarantee, I better guarantee that once you get to where you, somebody's gonna be watching you. That's why the Bible said, be careful how you judge. Because most people are not judging in regards to spiritual judgment. Their judgment is in regards to trying to get somebody in trouble or if you gone, I can move up and take your position. Or if I can keep the heat on you, I can keep the heat off me for what I'm doing. And I hate it. And you know who else I think hate it? The Lord, because his word talks about it. Being a busy body in other people matters. Sometimes you gotta let the police do their job. Do you understand? Whatever position they got, you gotta let them do their job. Don't do it for them. That's what they get paid the big bucks for. You a peon. All you tattletales out there who love to run and tell that and run and tell that, run and tell this. Because I'm the type of person, I'm a real, real smart aleck. And I'll say some things just to see if it get back to me. So be it. Choose your friends wisely. Choose your enemies. You can't really choose them, but they one and the same if you really pay attention to what I'm trying to tell you. 
Choose your words carefully. Don't tell everything. Please don't. Please don't. Are you the son of God? What you heard? Why you ask me these questions? I done talked about this a thousand times. You know the answer. Even Jesus told people, hey, don't tell nobody about this. Don't tell nobody what I just did. <laughs> Why would Jesus do that? Obedience. Why do we do it? Obedience. That's to see if I can trust you. Hey, man, it's between me and you. Now, we all do it. Am I saying I'm not prone to none of those stuff? Uh, I am. But as I get older and older, I start doing away with a lot of childish things. I start keeping my mouth shut on a lot of matters. Some things I will reveal to people. I had a coworker not too long ago. Some things happened. And one thing I realized something, you know, when you, when people tell on people and they're, they're expecting this outcome to come, then it don't happen. Then you got to look at that person in your face, in their faces. Because things didn't happen how you expected it. And now you're going to feel ashamed. Because you didn't try to ruin this person's life. Their job. And the job was like. Uh, what you told me really irrelevant. Because I'm going to work them anyway. Now you look like a fool. <laughs> now you're like a fool. And then you got to look at this person in the face every day. Knowing that you a snitch. Betray the son of man with a kiss. This day and age betray us, betray me with breakfast. <laughs> your same enemies will give you something. Try to gain your trust. They give you anything. Try to you can trust me. You see what I give for you. See what I do for you. God told us how to be like that anyway. Don't give to those you're expecting something to receive from. Sometimes you just want to receive somebody on your side. You just try to bribe them. Hey, here you go. Here you go. Like me, please. Secrets. Pay attention. I done seen it happen time and time again. I remember doing the right thing. And not just because... I did the right thing. I worked for a job. Went through the interview. I saw some things that was going on wrong. I held my tongue forever. I was like, I'm not going to say anything. But I learned from this also. I said, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. But it's like the more I kept my mouth shut, the more they started attacking me. You know. I was like, you know what? Forget it. I don't care. I'm going to do what's right. And it backfired. You know whose side they took? <laughs> Human resources. The side of upper management. And I was like, wow, this world we live in is really messed up. But it's okay. It's okay. That day I learned something. Even sometimes if you feel it's right. It still may better benefit you to keep your mouth shut. Don't even say nothing. Because everybody's going to get that portion. For the wrong they do and the good they do. It's best to just let God handle it. And he will. And this was doing my Christian walk. I, mean, I had a lot of trial and error. Hey, try that. Try that. Do what's right. Because you're reading the Bible. You want to do what's right. Try to do what's pleasing to the Lord. Then I started realizing sometimes what's pleasing to the Lord is keeping your mouth shut. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing to your brother. Don't say nothing to your sister. Don't say nothing to your mother, your father, your auntie, your cousin. Nothing. You see it all the time. People love getting in other people's business. Why? Because most people like mess. Not that they want to help you. They're messy. 
something to tell you. Going from house to house, telling everything. And the people who listen don't really care. They just like to hear misery and pain. That's why you got the Lord. One thing about it, the Lord will listen to every word you say and never tell you to shut up. I didn't realize that. So many days in this car and I drove, just complained for 30 minutes. <laughs> just went in, ah, the Lord never said shut up. But if somebody come to me complaining for 30 minutes, I'm about 15 minutes in, I'm like, man, enough is enough. <laughs> That's enough. God, leave, man. Let it go. I'm guilty of that. Because I'm man. I can't answer all these problems. Hey, pray about it, man. Pray about it. I was watching a show the other day called 60 Days In. And there was one chick there. She's a spiritual person. And she said something I probably would have said, too. But there was two people, two contestants in there. The one, she had all these type of health problems. And she was just complaining. Every time she sit down, complain about it, complain about it, complain about it. And a follower of Christ lady, a spiritual lady said, this is jail. And she was just so upset with her. But she said something in her mouth. She was like, you can go kiss Jesus sandals or something. And then she said something derogatory about it, about where she said she was mad at her because she didn't say the things that were pleasing to her, what she wanted to hear. But she told her the truth. This is jail. Let's just say the follower of Christ woman lasts the whole time. The other woman who spoke words against the other woman, the follower of Christ, she dropped out shortly after. But I saw the spiritual in that. A lot of people don't like to hear what they need to hear. Let's get in the habit. If you're going to say something, say what somebody needs to hear. Not what they want to hear. Yeah, try to keep your mouth shut as long as you can. But say what needs to hear. If somebody keeps coming to you complaining about the same thing, or saying the same thing, six, day, six days in, okay, okay. All right, I shut my mouth. Then you're going to be like David. Then not over my mouth. My tongue was cleaving to the roof of my mouth, and then I opened my mouth. I got tired. I had to say something about it. I had to do something. I'm not saying shut up all the time. I'm not saying that. I'm saying let the spirit work through you. And I'm telling you to talk all the time? No. Sometimes the spirit, the spirit will shut you up from saying something. Even to your own husband. Women got a way of telling. I'm going to tell you something about women. Somebody to figure out over time. Oh man, I might get backlash on this. But women will tell you things in regards to for, for you to tell them something. Your wife. I'm going to say your wife. A significant other. Or some husbands do it too. I can't just say just women. You know, uh, I ran into so-and-so yesterday, an old girlfriend of mine. Oh, you did? Oh. Then they look at like, don't you got something to say? <laughs> no. Because some things are best left unsaid. All it's going to do is cause confusion, a lot of it. Even the person that said it don't even realize when you tell people certain things, especially your husband, your wife, you like, that jealousy spirit got a way of just doing something to you. And that's unless you're real strong spiritual, it's going to get you every time. You might say something, I don't care. Because yeah, you ran into so-and-so. I don't care. 20 minutes later, you're in the bedroom. Is that it? <laughs> and most likely that's probably exactly what it was but that enemy don't tell everything oh you're supposed to we won no you don't 
according to scripture. But most people don't want to go by scripture. They don't. Women, some women feel like they got to know everything that goes on in your head. This is my brain that God gave to me. And the Lord said, be slow to speak. <laughs> so I'm going to be very careful what I say. And you should be too. No matter who it is. You ever watch First 48? Just tell us. We're going to get your time cut short. <laughs> Just tell us. Your, 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 they lying. Like they, your homeboy next door, Tukey. Tukey had already told us that you were the one with the gun. What? Then they start spilling the beans. And they already tell you the, in the Miranda rights or whatever. Every word you speak can be used against you. But you know what the truth is? You can take that and re relate it to real life. Every word you say can be used against you. So choose your words very wisely. Oh yeah, what, what's sweeter than honey? What's stronger than a lion? Those simple words told to his wife caused him to have to go slaughter 30 Philistines to get their tunics. Because one thing about Samson, he's a very powerful man. If he said he was going to do something, he did it. So he did it. And the thing is, it didn't benefit his, his wife at all. Running her mouth about what her husband said. Or a soon to be husband. It didn't benefit her. She still got burned. She still got burned. I guess it had something to do with her betrayal. And then the husband, then the father-in-law took the took the girl and gave her to his friend. Wow, so great who with friends like these, who need enemy? Instead of the friend saying, hey man, you know what? That's Samson's wife. I don't want her. I take her. Because a lot of people are always looking around to try to take your woman or your husband away from you. <laughs> and they'll do anything to do it. And if you're weak, you'll let them do it. One thing in my life I don't realize, he said, uh, what the, the Bible says, drink water from your own cistern and stolen waters are sweet. You know, it's like when you're doing something wrong, grow up, doing something you know you were supposed to be doing, it feels so great. Until a dart strikes you in the liver. It's a lot of things I play about in this world. I love the joke. But it's one thing I don't play about as a husband. Messing with my wife. I make have an argument with my wife tomorrow. Yes, today. If you try to cross her or try to. Sneak your way in And I find out I might not be able to guard my tongue that time I might not even be able to guard my fist And I'm sure God understands Because he might need to teach you a lesson Because I may drop kick you I don't carry guns I don't believe in them I keep a knife on me just in case but I use it more for work than anything, not for cutting flesh. But I'm human. I'm capable of anything. If you cross me. Not intentionally. But if you cross me, if you cross my household. Consider it a warning. You know, because when people are arguing, when husband and wife are arguing, that's when all those... Snakes come out from under the rocks. It's my chance. Yeah. If you find out, it's your chance to get beat down. <laughs> I'm just telling you straight up. It's your chance. Keep secrets, husbands and wives. Keep secrets from other people in regards to that goes on in your house. Keep secrets from each other sometimes. 
the Lord said, put in nice place, not your trust in man. I don't think people really get that concept. Stop telling everybody everything. Because everybody's not for you. The majority of people in this world are against you, especially if you are a follower of Christ. Just get that through your head. The majority are going to be against you just because of who you are and what you are. And you can't be running your mouth to devils expecting to get a godly answer. You know, a lot of times devils will reveal themselves. I done had many situations in my life when I'm hanging around with my friends, going through some hard times. And I'm just talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. They ain't really stood nothing I'm saying. Then a random stranger come up talking about God. And uh, they don't want to hear nothing he got to say. And I'm like, wow. Hmm. <laughs> Pay attention. A lot of things will reveal themselves to you. Them same people you're trying to tell everything to ain't listening to nothing. Nothing. Learn to keep secrets. Place your trust in the Lord. Keeping a secret from your wife or your husband that's not going to harm your relationship is not wrong. Sometimes certain things that you speak that you think going to help your relationship will try to br will bring destruction in. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I learned this through the years. Have a blessed day.